Only real update we have on our breeding is going to be our last clutch of the season. We've had these two together multiple times now and are waiting. This is our normal Champagne, who is a little fired up tonight for some reason. And we paired her to our Cinnamon Spider Calico. And we are hoping to get a few worlds first out of these two. It would definitely be a good thing for us. Kind of put us on the map as breeders and get us going. She is just fired up. I'm not sure what her deal is. Um, she's going to eat my face if she gets a chance. I'm trying to grab the snake hook, which is above her head, which is a great place for it. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool to see the muscle and just how far they can stretch and what they can do. She's not huge, but I definitely don't want to get her teeth in me. It would not be a, a fun way to end the day. So, see if we can get back, her back in there a little peacefully. Come on. But, yeah, she is. she ate a couple of days ago, so I don't know that she's gravid, but we're definitely trying to get her going. And like I said, we have her paired with our little uh, cinnamon spider calico male, and he is cool. So I'm not sure that we're going to get those world's first combos, but there is a chance we will. And if there's a chance, then we'll take it. Alright, it is better than Christmas. It is time to cut some eggs. This is our, what is this, Lemon Blast Banana Clutch. Seven eggs. One of them got really weird, so I kind of separated it out a little bit from the other ones. Uh, it turned kind of a weird brown color, got a little slimy looking, but it's still dimpled just like the rest of them. It never rotted, it never did anything. Uh, so I don't know. I've candled it a few times and I can kind of see stuff in there but not a lot of vein networks so i'm not very hopeful about that one but i do want to check it out and then super excited to see what else we can get oh yeah that's definitely easier than using the blade First baby's definitely got some banana going there. A little eyeball looking up at me. Hey buddy. Looks like straight banana, kind of hard to tell. Ew. It's all gooey. Yeah, just banana. I say just banana. Beautiful banana. And it looks like that's it. Right there. Beautiful. That's what we are going for. Yeah. Golly. Look at that. You can see the lines in there on the side. Um, beautiful. 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 Gosh. I'm excited about these. But that's what a slug looks like. And I say a slug, it may not have been one. There's um, eh, there's some blood in there. I don't know what happened. Like there definitely, it started. It just didn't finish for us. Box number two. Number two. Let's see what we got on these bad boys. Looks like we got a... Oh, holy cow. Oh, that's a belly. I was about to say, man, this thing looks insane. Um, come here, let me see you. Oh, look at that. Another banana, um, banana pin. Beautiful. Goodness. Let's see here. Looks like, well, looks like a normal. How the heck? Maybe it's a pastel. Yeah, it looks like a little pastel. Like, oh, golly, get all dirty. Trying to get the hatch right back out of there. Eep. Another little pastel. Looks healthy though. And 
then last egg. Oh, looks bright. I was kind of worried about this clutch. We had a, a weird spike in our uh, incubator, and it popped up to like a hundred and I don't even remember. It was like 104, 108 degrees one day. Kind of scared me. Didn't know what was going to happen with these guys. This one, that's uh, hard to tell. Come here. Look at that. That one may be the uh, banana we were going for. But I'm not sure. Find out in a couple of days when these come out all the way. Just want to cut them, make sure they're okay, and then check out that one bad egg. So, not too bad. We are checking on some of these babies as they come out. We have the first little one that came out all the way on his own, and this is our, this is actually one of the banana lemon blasts. It's absolutely beautiful, great little pattern, and uh, kind of light on the darker spots. Has a lot of that orangey, pinkish yellow from the banana, and it's just beautiful, beautiful little snake. That head is ridiculous. Some bright yellow on the face. Man, I don't know if y'all can see that. Yeah, right across the bridge at the nose. That is an intense yellow. Love working with the baby snakes. It's by far the best part of my job. The coolest thing is to see these little babies come out and to be these absolutely crazy paint jobs where they are, you know, they start out as something that's brown and white and black and then they turn into these beautiful orange and yellow and some of them purple and just absolutely crazy stuff. And I love it, love what I do. And for some reason, some of these guys, after they're born, don't want to eat. And pretty much all these guys have eaten by now. Uh, either I've had to assist feed them or they've eaten on their own. And for some reason, they just decide to stop eating later on. And sometimes they're kind of weird. Sometimes ball pythons especially get stressed out and they won't eat. But sometimes they just won't do it. You know, whatever the case is. And I was thinking about them, why that is. And why after three or four meals, all of a sudden, they're not wanting to eat again. And why are they having to be assist fed? And why is all this stuff going on? I think about that in relation to my own life. I think about how, just like I have to take the tongs and use those to put a rat inside the snake in their mouth so that way they start to taste it and start to get used to eating. Sometimes we need that from God. Just like sometimes I have to take the tongs and physically put the rat inside the snake's mouth for it to start eating and start that process. Sometimes God has to do that with us. You know, it's like, his word is food. His word feeds us. It gives us that living water. It gives us the nutrients that we need. And for some reason, sometimes we're so stubborn to it. And sometimes we know we need it. And we just refuse to listen. And so it takes somebody coming along to have to force feed it. And kind of get it started. And get us going. I've never understood why that is. You know, it's like we... I think especially as men, we want to have that thought that we are good on our own. And we're completely self-sufficient. And we don't need anybody. But the truth is we do. And as somebody who's lived so much of their life without God, you know, I know what I was missing, and I know what I have now. And I know that I don't ever want to go back to that. And so just like I'm having to help these guys learn to eat, I had to learn to eat too. I had to learn to accept what was given to me because it's going to give me nutrients. It's going to help me grow and be stronger and be better and be who I'm supposed to be. And that's something you guys are struggling with. If you're not being fed the way you need to be fed, if you're not eating the way you need to be eating, if you're not getting what you need and you're not growing as a result of that use this as somebody trying to force feed you trying to put something in your mouth or in your heart and get it going if we can ever do anything for you if you ever have any questions if we can support you through prayer or absolutely anything please feel free to reach out we're always here for you we love you guys may be blessed to be blessing those around you we'll catch you next time